It's graduation day in Judge Larry Brown's mental health court. Ah, oh, Caesar. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Judge. Oh, I love the smile. And Caesar has a lot to smile about. I was homeless. Nothing would stop me from getting high. He attend all his treatment appointments. I got a second chance in life. Promise you're going to keep doing everything you've been doing? Yes, sir, I promise. Now that Caesar's completed his program, his convictions are raised. Case dismissed. Congratulations. Caesar's story. I didn't know another life. Is a powerful example. Until I got arrested. Of the potential. And I quit cold turkey. Of California's treatment courts. I found the Lord. Now I'm sober. Now I see the life of a sober man. Now I see how a, a real man feels. Supporters of Prop 36 point to stories like his, arguing it'll revive drug treatment courts, forcing more people like Caesar into treatment and services and off the streets. But opponents, including Governor Gavin Newsom and some lawmakers here in California's capital, argue there simply aren't enough treatment beds for Prop 36 to work. So instead, they say it's about mass incarceration. It's about now to understand this debate. You have to go back 10 years to when voters passed a different ballot measure, Prop 47. It made possession of hard drugs a misdemeanor instead of a felony. And along with some other reforms, helped to reduce California's prison population. But drug court data suggests it also had some unintended consequences. It eviscerated drug court participation. We saw homelessness skyrocket and overdose deaths have gone up over 200 percent. San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan and Sacramento County DA Tin Ho were among a growing number of high profile elected Democrats going against Newsom to support the new treatment mandated felonies for hard drug possession under Prop 36. They say when California slashed sentences for drug possession, it also slashed the incentive for people to choose court supervised treatment instead of jail time. And when you're caught in the throes of addiction, that is an easier path. There was no longer accountability. If you get arrested, cited and released for possession of drugs, it's a misdemeanor. And when the judge tells you, oh, these are misdemeanor cases, you can do two or three days in jail, or you can go to a treatment program that's going to be a year long. What are you going to take? While there's no reliable statewide drug court data, CBS News California analyzed county data from across the state, and we found a consistent drop in drug court participation after California reduced sentencing. For instance, Sacramento County saw an 80% drop in drug court participation, and it dropped so low in Santa Clara County, they stopped tracking and merged drug court with mental health court. The goal is not to send people to jail, but... Under Prop 36, the first two convictions for drug possession would still be misdemeanors. The third would be a treatment-mandated felony, meaning if they complete treatment, the charge is dismissed. On a fourth conviction, a judge could issue a maximum three-year sentence, but only if someone is not eligible for treatment. It's pragmatic. It focuses on repeat offenders. It's about mass treatment, not mass incarceration. Research cited by the California court system suggests drug courts do lead to fewer rearrests and lower costs. I would ask those that support it, particularly mayors, uh, where are the treatment slots, where are the beds? Now, opponents like the governor say there simply aren't enough treatment beds. Saying you can do treatment as your punishment and treatment actually being available for that are two very different things. Christine Soto de Berry, a former San Francisco prosecutor, helped draft the opposition to Prop 36. And no county in the state has enough treatment to deal with the people that are struggling with addiction issues. None, not one. And if none are available, then they'll do jail or probation. Except supporters note Prop 36 specifically says people cannot be sent to jail or prison if they're eligible for treatment, which brings us back to the governor's argument. It's about mass incarceration. It's about bringing it back to 1980s mindset. In reality, the nonpartisan legislative analyst office estimates the prison population could increase by around a few thousand people. For context, there are currently around 90,000 people in state prisons, and at our peak, there were over 170,000. <laughs> Caesar was arrested in Sacramento County, which has a robust treatment program. And I thank God that he locked me up because I'm sober now. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. While in treatment, his caseworker helped him find housing and work. Being arrested saved my life. But for now, his story is just one anecdote with great potential. I mean, when you see tents like this. It brings me back. It, it brings me back, but it's not going to stop me from, from continuing my new life because nothing can stop me no more.